Rose the Prude is a brilliant third episode of the first season of The Golden Girls. And as with the previous two episodes, this is the first time I've seen this episode. It's the first time I'm watching the show as a whole. And I really enjoy this for two reasons. One, I think it addresses some really important topics. Two, there's obviously a decent amount of comedy in it. And I guess a third reason is that Rose gets a chance to shine. Because up until this point, Rose hasn't really been the centre of attention. And I feel like... We didn't know that much about her. We still don't know a tremendous amount about her, but I definitely feel closer to the character. So there will be spoilers from this point on as I discuss various points within the episode. We have a subplot involving Dorothy and her, uh, her mother, Sophia, playing Jin. And that's fine. I didn't really know where they were going with it to begin with. In fact, for most of the episode, there was some comedy with it, but I wasn't sure what the point was. But then it's revealed towards the end of the episode, and as I said, spoilers, that Sophia actually likes playing cards with Dorothy because she likes the talking. And I think that that's probably true for for a lot of people, whether you're playing cards or chess or some other game like that where... It allows you to talk one-on-one -on -one and interact with somebody. Yes, the game might be fun, but it's also an opportunity to bond and, and interact. And I liked that message. I wasn't sure where they were going with that part of the narrative, but I really, uh, I really enjoyed where it went. The main narrative, of course, focuses on Rose. And it starts off with Blanche asking Rose to go on a double date with her because Blanche's date's brother is in town. And unless there is a date for the brother the date's going to have to cancel. So Blanche convinces Rose to go with her. She doesn't really want to, but then it turns out they actually hit it off. And this is a guy called Arnie, played by Harold Gold, who is a, a brilliant actor. He's been in everything, quite frankly. And Rose and Arnie end up going on a cruise together. And again, Rose wasn't really sure if she wanted to go because it's she's never been with anybody since... Her husband passed, but it's also been 15 years. And as Dorothy tells her, if you don't take a chance, nothing is going to happen. And I think that's largely the main message here. There are two main messages. The first is that if you don't take a chance, nothing will happen. You don't know what things will play out like. But the other is that if you, if you have lost a loved one, they're probably going to want you to be happy and see other people and allow yourself to spend time with other people without feeling like you're cheating on them. Because this is what was holding Rose back. It was partly because she hasn't been with anybody since her husband, but also because she didn't want to feel like she was cheating on Charlie. And she and Arnie, Arnie is a, a perfect gentleman, a really lovely character, and they have a, a, a real heart to heart. And the discussion they have when they're sitting side by side on the bed, this is after Rose has locked herself in the bathroom. She's been crying. It's it's obviously a very difficult time for her. But then she sits down with Arnie and Arnie tells her that, well, he knows what she's going through. He lost his wife. And obviously when he was with somebody else the first time after, he did feel guilty. And I like the fact that it's kind of normalizing that. It's not a nice feeling. But it is, it's something that pretty much everybody who goes through this will feel. And that it's also okay to allow yourself to be with other people because that's what your significant others would have wanted. They would have wanted you to be happy. And Rose is slowly able to start to come to terms with this. I don't know. I haven't looked ahead. I don't know if Rose continues to see uh, Arnie after this. I hope she does because I really like the character. But I don't know if this was just a one-time one thing. I'll find out in due course, but certainly the way things went for Rose here, I think, was it was very believable. It felt very realistic, and I think it'll be something that's relatable for for a lot of people. And I think it worked really well. Something I'm also really enjoying with the Golden Girls, and again, this is also kind of the point of the show, I'm enjoying the jokes about older life, about being older in age, because most sitcoms both back then and today, the protagonists are usually, they're usually under the age of 30. And now that I'm 31, nearly 32, admittedly not quite the age of the Golden Girls, but the humour is really starting to appeal to me. And that's not to say it wouldn't have, wouldn't have appealed to me when I was younger, but certainly it's something that I'm finding to be really good fun and, and really, I think it's nice to laugh about getting older because it's it's full of uncertainty and <laughs> bodies falling apart and things just not working the way they used to. But 
You need to laugh at it because we all go through it. And again, it also normalizes getting older as well. So I can completely, even three episodes in, I can see why this show worked. I can see why it was so well loved. I'm surprised nobody's tried to do something similar. I think there have been, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, there are films that deal with, you know, a predominantly older cast, but I can't think of a single sitcom where the main cast is all over the age of 50. And I'd quite like to see them do something, but maybe the, it would be seen as copycat. So I don't know. But either way, really thoroughly enjoying it. I thought Rose the Prude was definitely very funny, but also with some pretty heavy subjects that it handled really well and I really thoroughly enjoyed it.